Hey guys, and welcome to the AC. Hey, so I'm Amanda, and this is probably the first time watching me. I've just started vlogging my honors year. This week we've got intensive classes, but I thought I would show you the future row, which is on campus. And now I was like, fortunate enough to do some conservation work on the future row when it first arrived on campus. We actually um, stripped off some paint and put it in little resin like this. This isn't the resin of the future row, this is another project which I might um, blog about later on. It's a, a gold frame which was pretty cool work that I did. But anyway, back to the future row. Um, so what we did was scrape off some paint off the future row put it in the resin and then you can just lightly sand it and it reveals all the layers of the paint which when it arrived it was silver but it has since been restored to its original color which is kind of yellowy orange the future row was created by a Athenish designer Matt Sereno I butchered that I'll put it down the bottom here somewhere um, in the 60s and the 70s there was about 50 or 60 created all together and there's only a few left in the world and we've got one on campus and I actually never knew where it ended up once it moved from its original spot um, a few years ago and I've now found it because I've had intensive classes. I'm in an area of campus that I haven't had much to do with but I found it so let's go have a look. Funny how it's over now I didn't think you'd let me down though you said you would Funny how you leave in town Something that I learnt from a American architect and engineer, Jacques Fresco, who um, has commissioned like the the Venus Project. If you just Google that, it's pretty fun and interesting. Kind of future world ideas and designs and stuff. But this kind of reminds me a lot of his architecture. And a fun fact about the the dome shape is that it uses the least amount of materials for the most amount of space, which I think is pretty cool. Let's go have a look inside. Okay, we're going inside. Up the stairs. <gasps> look at it, isn't it pretty? So when I saw this a few years ago, it was very run down. None of the insides had been done up at all. There was a lot of water damage. And look at it, now it's like a nice little study place where students can come and have a cup of coffee, use the Wi-Fi, study. It's pretty freaking cool. Ooh. Check it out. And if we have a look close up, we've got these removable, movable little swivel desk and power outlet for the computers. And I don't know if they're the signal for Wi-Fi or whether it just comes through the building. And the door is a remote control, controlled by admin inside, which, who I asked to open the doors. And we've got lights of some description. I don't know. What does that do? We've got a knob. What else have we got over here? So they've got some little lights. Oh. Little lights there around the edges. Free with cobwebs. And it's pretty freaking amazing. Um, now that we're actually in the future, I thought it would be a good time to talk about what was in here originally and why it was built. So it was built um, by Matty Saronin. Saronin. No, I still can't get it right. Um, but basically it had a kitchen, a bathroom, a bedroom and a fireplace and it would just heat up in 20 minutes, um, which is exactly what you want when you come out of the snow and it's all cold and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, and now it's a little study hall. Okay, so that was a bit of fun, but now back to the serious class stuff. Um, we're going to eavesdrop in on Amanda's discussion about her project. I'm with you here. Yeah. Um, but like these dudes are just checking out 
out and not listen to anything you said from this morning, from the day before? I don't know. Cool. Yeah, alright, tell us. Cool. Tell us. Um, it is, I am investigating um, mental illness in uh, isolated New South Wales towns. Okay, but we're talking about epistemology and theoretical premise. Yes. I'm going to hazard a guess because okay. I'm not at all confident in my answer. Um, would it be constructionism? Because she's, there's no single reality or truth, but it's created by individuals in groups. Mm -hmm. That's the one I remember. Yes. Yep. That sounds like a pretty good fit to me. <laughs> yep. All right, last two bits for the day. We uh, I've managed to convince my class, my honours class, to do the mannequin challenge. Yay! So let's go have a look. It's not where you can find a diamond in the rough But rather how it's made It isn't tangible or alive It isn't something that you can see or you can find Nor is it noticed, nor is it visualized It comes with time, it comes with development It comes with the sacrifice of love, energy and time No one is perfect, but in the end Everyone's imperfectly flawless Everyone's eyes Sparking through your blues As the fire grew Or under pressure now Inside of you All of this tension oh, All of this burden oh, It'll vaporize when the pain is all you know The shadows they crawl in the night time When the lights come back on You will see that Oh, don't let it hurt you You got perfect flaws You got beautiful skies See how the leeches they grimace When they cannot a dime a dozen, a drop in the sea It's been a pretty amazing day. Thanks for tuning in for another vlog with the EC and I'll catch you all later. Bye.